Around the globe, the chicken has become iconic in art, cuisine, and everyday life. But the modern day chicken doesn't fly, it doesn't feed itself, and it certainly couldn't survive without us. Deriving from the red jungle fowl of Southeast Asia, the bird has been carefully bred for decades to conform to exactly what we need. This can be seen within just the last 50 years alone. Man-made in a sorts, the evolution has led to this, the featherless chicken. Very clearly a unique breed of chicken, it was created in 2002 by a team of researchers at a genetics faculty center near Tel Aviv, Israel. Though it is visually comparable to that of a mad science experiment, the featherless chicken is actually the result of simply using selective breeding and crossbreeding. According to the scientists behind it, the idea was to create a breed that grew faster than the average chicken while simultaneously using less food to do so as they are more energy efficient. This was thought to be revolutionary as the impact for companies in the poultry industry would see great financial gains by being able to cut both in feeding costs but also require less time to develop meaning a faster return on investment. It was also thought that they could have a positive impact on the environment as plucking feathers in conventional chickens requires large amounts of water that are contaminated with fat and waste. However, creating a chicken with no feathers has its fair share of drawbacks. It was quickly realized that males had a much harder time mating as they didn't have wings to flap. This interfered with their mating rituals. The lack of feathers also saw injuries in the process of mating as the males were far more prone to dig their beaks and nails into the hen's skin, causing deep cuts and sores. Furthermore, the featherless chicken being exposed means they are far more vulnerable to parasites, mosquitoes, and even the sun causing sunburn. As such, they also don't do too well in colder climates. Taking all of this into consideration, it is no surprise that many oppose their creation, claiming their existence is a prime example of human greed negatively impacting animals for the sole purpose of benefiting us and our consumption. Dolly the Sheep, named after Dolly Parton, is the most infamous clone in history. She was the product of a series of experiments done by various scientists, surgeons, and vets at the Rosslyn Institute. Led by Professor Sir Ian Wilmot, this research was aimed at further understanding how cells change during development and whether or not specialized cells such as skin or brain cells could be used to create an entirely new animal. Dolly was the product of this. She was created using a single cell taken from the mammary gland of a six-year-old Dorset sheep and an unfertilized egg cell taken from a Scottish black-faced sheep. She didn't come easy though. The team made a staggering 277 attempts at creating a clone, yet in the end, only one pregnancy went to full term. After 148 days, on July 5th of 1996, it was a 6.6 kilogram Finn Dorset lamb named Dolly. She was an incredible sheep. Though she actually wasn't the first mammal to be cloned, she was the first mammal to ever be cloned from an adult cell, proving that a specialized cell could indeed be used to create an exact copy of an animal they came from. Her success opened up a world of new possibilities, including the development of personalized stem cells. Despite the extreme onslaught of media attention surrounding Dolly, she actually led a very normal, albeit quite a pampered life at the Rosslyn Institute living among other sheep. She went on to have six lambs of her own, proving a cloned sheep could reproduce without any abnormal effects. At just four years old though, she became infected with a virus called JSRV, a virus that causes lung cancer among sheep. It would be just three years later that she developed a cough. It was found that she had tumors growing in her lungs and that she had also developed severe arthritis. In order to ensure that she didn't suffer, it was ultimately decided that she needed to be put to sleep. On February 14th of 2003, at age 6, she was put to rest living just half as long as a normal Finn Dorset sheep, with their life expectancy being about 12 years. Interestingly, remember that she was developed using the nuclei of an already 6 year old sheep, leading some to believe that this could be the cause of her early death. Since Dolly, nearly two dozen different kinds of mammals have been cloned, but never had there been a primate. That was until just this year. These two monkeys made headlines out of China as being the first primates to ever be successfully cloned, meaning it is very likely the same could be done with humans. Today's global population consumes a whopping 129 billion pounds of beef every year. Therefore, it is no wonder that those who stand to profit from our consumption have worked towards modifying cows. Insert the Belgian Blue. 
Known as the super cow, the modern Belgian blue cow was developed in the 1950s by Professor Hansen. To create these creatures, sperm taken from bulbs with the most desirable traits is taken to a lab and analyzed so incredibly precisely that actual individual sperm are chosen. The sperm is then artificially inseminated into a female cow, further modifying this breed. The result from decades of this has led to the super cow. Though these cows appear to be scientifically man-made, which they really are, they are technically completely natural. They are simply created by humans manipulating natural selection to create these absurdly massive cows with cuts of meat that are much more lean and fast cooking. What makes the Belgian Blue special is that through years of breeding, they actually contain a gene mutation responsible for creating myostatin. This inhibits muscle growth, regulating how much muscle is developed. This is the result of these cows having been selectively bred from animals that contain a copy of this gene that simply doesn't work. In other words, it leads to them developing far more muscle tissue than average cattle in a process known as double muscling. Interestingly, the same mutation also interferes with fat deposition, meaning they also have a much lower fat percentage. Their appearance naturally causes many to question whether their meat is healthy to consume. However, extensive testings done by the USDA have found that the meat from Belgian blue cows can be consumed at no risk to humans. With their size, it is inevitable that there would be some setbacks though. Their birth canal is much more narrow. This, paired with their much larger mass, means they have an extreme issue giving birth. In some of these herds, C-sections account for a staggering 90% of all births. Further, some calves, due to their gene mutation, also grow tongues far too large to eat with or even cause breathing problems, often causing early death. Their weight also commonly leads to stiff legs and cardiorespiratory problems. These are fluorescent fish, sold by a company named Glowfish. Though black lights do enhance their colors, these glowing fish are visible even during the daylight, absorbing light and then re-emitting it in these bright colors. Originally bred over a decade ago, they were created in hopes that they would help in detecting environmental pollutants. The goal was essentially to create a switch that would cause always fluorescing fish to selectively fluoresce in the presence of environmental toxins. In other words, the switch within these fish would turn on and cause them to become fluorescent, meaning a non-glowing fish would signal safe water, while a glowing fish would signal contaminated water. The first step, logically, was to develop a fish that was fluorescent at all. To do this, a fluorescent gene is added to the fish before it hatches from its egg. After this is done once, the process doesn't need to be done again, as the fish will then pass their genes on to their offspring. In the process of creating this fish, scientists behind the project realized they had created an animal that could potentially become very popular with the public, and thus the company Glowfish was formed. Their debut into pet stores across America was met with plenty of concerns, outrage, and even an initial ban in California. Today though, you can purchase these glowing fish in dazzling colors like Starfire Red, Electric Green, and Sunburst Orange. Oxford-based biotechnology firm Oxitec could set out to solve one of mankind's largest threats and utter annoyances, the mosquito. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone too fond of the blood sucking bug, and Ozitec scientists claim they may have the answer. They have engineered the sudden death mosquito. The idea is that after an Oxitec mosquito successfully mates with a wild female, the offspring that they bear will not survive to adulthood. In other words, these mosquitoes would ensure that future generations of mosquitoes would never live long enough to reproduce. This means a staggering decline in their population in areas where the Oxitec mosquito is released with the potential of completely ridding us of the pesky mosquito entirely. The company's aim is to stop the dengue fever in its tracks. An incredible 50 million people every year are impacted by the virus, a virus that has fast spread and put nearly half of the planet's population at risk of infection. It is spread from person to person almost exclusively via the mosquito. With nothing in terms of a cure or even really any treatment, you can begin to see the issue. The sudden death mosquito is a genetically modified organism that in some ways seems like a great solution to something we all find ourselves complaining about. 
kill them before they kill us. But this could come with its own consequences. As with any tinkering with mother nature, there can be unforeseen consequences that could vastly disrupt our natural ecosystem. Various different animals, ranging from insects to fish to birds, rely on mosquitoes as a source of food. How this would impact them can't truly be known until it is done. Furthermore, the wiping out of the common mosquito could open the floodgates to an even larger threat, such as these viruses mutating and becoming even more dangerous. Tests done by Oxitec have proven to be quite successful, as in 2009 nearly 20,000 of their mosquitoes were released on Grand Cayman Island in the Caribbean, followed by an even larger release of about 3 million the following year. The company claims they had a great success by eliminating an impressive 80% of mosquitoes in the target area for 3 months. They didn't stop there, as they have continued tests in Malaysia and Brazil with the Brazilian government giving the go ahead for future tests. They have also been in contact with the United States government who could be interested in not just eliminating this disease harboring bug, but also agricultural pests. Genetically modified insects could become commonplace in the future.